Histopathology, Cytopathology 1 is a second year course in our laboratory medicine degree. There were two things that inspired us to change the way we were currently teaching our course. Firstly it was we really wanted to engage our students more in the practical classes. We found they weren't really prepared for what they were doing, so they weren't getting the benefit from the class that they should be getting. And secondly, because we've been having larger and larger cohorts over the past five years, we really needed to try and change the way we were approaching our teaching to reduce the pressure on our teaching staff, but still give students the best experience that they could have. The flipped classroom approach gives students material and resources before their class so that they're prepared when they come into the class for what they're doing. They already know theory and material behind it. I think it differs from more traditional forms because it's more engaging and it makes you more responsible for your own learning process. Coming from 10 years in the Navy, I understand that you've got to do a lot of work outside of the nine to five hours and the same here at university. You, you can't get everything done in a classroom time and a great benefit of the flipped classroom approach is then it gives you time in practical classes to go through more material that the students wouldn't normally get an opportunity to see or be exposed to in the traditional format of teaching. Firstly, we've developed uh, pre-lab videos that students now watch before they come to class. We've kept them short so that they're enjoyable and engaging. The videos are great. They allow you to get an understanding of what you're doing and see the processes. And we go through um, the pretty much more the technical side of things on how to do things, how to wash their slides, how to, um, you know, what kind of staining they're looking for and all of that. I find them very helpful in because reading the prac prior to class is very difficult to understand sometimes because you don't understand what chemicals they are and what effect they're going to have on the stain. So if you can actually visualise your lab before you walk in there, you know what's in front of you, everything is there and it's familiar to you. You know exactly what the setup is and you can get straight into it. We spent around a few days um, just going through each practical um, exercises um, and just filming the techniques and then doing a brief introduction for each video as well. And what we did in particular was we designed a good student and a bad student. So one of our staff members, me, <laughs> is the bad student and I do everything wrong every week and our other staff member is the good student and she shows the students the correct way of doing the protocols that they're doing. And it's also handy to know the exact steps of procedures that you've got to do before you get into a lab. Because they're going through the lab manual, you know exactly where they're going from, you can read along with it, you can add notes where you need to. It's very easy to follow. Prior to coming to class, you already have gone through the material, so when you get there, you're prepared, you're engaged, you're better equipped to meet the expectations and goals of the practical. So if your mind has already prepared you for the steps you need to take, it sort of becomes second nature to you while you're running through the lab yourself. So during the class, they take notes of the results of their experiments and then they uh, submit an online pro forma, which they have a week to do after the class is finished. We used to force them to do that during the practical class and they got really stressed under the, the time pressure of having to write all of their results in the two hour time frame plus do the experiment. Because like today, we had a very long lab, just ran on time, I knew what I was doing. People are still in there now, run over time and then they're in their lunch break working because they didn't go through the study materials beforehand. So if the students submit their pro forma, they then get access to a short video that summarises the experiments that they've just done and it also gives them more information about the theory that they've been learning, helping them to consolidate their learning. Um, we go through the main points that, we, uh, that the students need to take out from the prep classes. So we thought most of our students are visual learners, so we thought making a video will hopefully help them pick up the important points in the uh, sessions. As someone who's a very visual learner and I like to take notes to be able to remember things later. It helps watching the videos because I can watch them over and over and over again until I can say the names of some of the things that you would never think <laughs> of saying. So the benefits of the, the videos for the students is they can also review it again for, um, for their exams because in the videos we cover through the theory, the, the staining principles of each stain that they cover in the semester. Uh, the second change that we've made is we created a formative assessment at the start of the semester where the students have um, a lab report 
that they submit and another student will peer review it. The good thing about doing the peer review is you get to see what other people are submitting as their work so you can know what kind of how you can improve your work based on what they have done in their report. It's probably one of the best teaching tools for getting students to understand the steps for scientific writing and how other people do it differently instead of just a teacher going, this is your mark, this is where you went wrong. It gives you an outside view of reading an assessment, so you're reading the assessment as someone marking it. I find it nice to compare what I have written compared to what they have written because I try and be overly scientific and overly analytical in my language and other people say more simplistic things and get a better mark. So it takes the pressure off them needing to understand how to write a good report at the beginning of the semester. Which is very helpful because you then have an idea of what the markers expect, the format, you know that it has to be clear and concise. It's very easy for you to understand your own material when you've written it. But for you to actually read and understand someone else's material, you have to be clear, concise, and you have to write it in a logical and in a presentable way. And it gives them an opportunity to work on their skills before their final assessment, which is worth a significant portion of their final marks for the subject. Over the course of this semester, we've found that by adopting the flipped classroom approach, we have about an extra half an hour in a two hour prac each week. And this has allowed us to tailor our practicals to present more results to the students. We've used our, our extra digital technology. So by using videos, we can use obviously visual means with filming our demonstrators performing techniques. By watching the videos I'm able to take notes on what I need to do in the actual prac and I can do that in my lab manual. We have an oral aspect because we're narrating over the top, explaining techniques. Over the top she's like, oh, it emphasises nuclear features so you understand why each stain had to, has to be used, why each technique has to be followed, why it's set a certain way. Uh, more visual but for more reading people we have text at the base of our videos and for kinesthetic because they're writing notes as they're watching the videos, they're also learning more, they're making those pathways as they write and watch at the same time. Yes, you get multiple times with the material, you go through the material, there's no wasting of time going back and forth with the demonstrator. We've made sure that we've been uh, analysing the feedback from students that we've been getting. So we've been using statistics tracking on Blackboard and we've found that a lot of our students watch our pre-lab videos two, three, four, even five times. And we've also found that the same thing is happening with our post-lab videos, that they're watching it up to five times. Going into exams having watched these videos as theory elements really helps again because you know what chemicals have an effect on what. The visual stimulation of the video actually makes you more prepared for the class. So there are tips and techniques included in the video that you won't necessarily get from the lab manual. They enjoy being able to watch it when they like, being in control of when and how they are learning. And also it just prepares you for a real world environment, a real world lab environment in that you don't necessarily have a manual, you don't necessarily have everyone, someone to talk you through steps A to B. You have to be prepared to achieve the learning outcomes. As a teaching team, you know, we've found that we've had to be very self-reliant and all work together. We've reduced our marking times, we've reduced the pressure on our teaching staff. In the end, it's really been rewarding for us producing something that we're really proud of. So I, I think it's really important for academic staff to embrace, you know, digital and online learning technologies as a platform to improve their teaching in their courses and that if you put in the effort, the start, you, you, you plan it well, it really rewards you because for the next four, five, six years, you've got a great foundation to continue to improve engaging and teaching each subsequent cohort that you'll teach.